This is 5.8 types of synovial joint notes. The essential question is, what are the six types of synovial joints and where are each one found in the body? The first synovial joint is called the plane joint. The reason why it's called plane joint is because the articular surface or the shape of the bones where they touch is flat and they have a slipping or gliding movement. And this movement can happen in the same plane, but in different directions. So an example of that type of joint is found between the carpal bones and the joints in intertarsal bones, which are your ankle bones, and your intervertebral joint, picture here, which is between the two vertebrae. So that's... so. What happens is the vertebrae above it glides on top of the one below. When you think of a hinge joint, think of a door swinging back and forth. It only has one plane of movement and one of the surfaces, the end of the bone surface, is going to be cylindrical. Like this bone here or this shape here. And then the other bone is going to be a trough shape. So when those two bones fit together, this bone is going to basically rotate back and forth into that bone. So it's going to create a hinge joint. Hinge joints are found in the elbow joint or knee joint or interphalangeal joints, which is joint between the finger bones and the jawbone or the temporomandibular joint is considered a hinge joint. Pivot joint is a twisting motion or rotational movement where you have a round end and a ring. So here's the ring and then a round object in between and it's spinning inside that ring. And so a pivot joint is churning in circle is would be what a pivot joint, the type of movement that happens in the pivot joint. Examples of that will be the proximal end of the radial ulnar joint between the radius and the ulna and between the C1 and C2, your atlas and axis joint. That's what allows you to shake your head no. That's a pivot joint. Condyloid joint also tells you the the shape of the surfaces where the bones meet. It is also called ellipsoid, which means it's an elliptical shape. Uh, so one of the surfaces is going to be an egg-shaped surface, and then the other surface is going to be a oval dip type of bone. And when those two bones come together, it creates two planes of motion, in this direction where it's back and forth and then it could also rock back and forth in this direction. So this type of joints will be found between the metacarpal phalangeal joint which is the knuckle joint and also you can find this type of joints between the skull bone and the C1, the atlas bone. Saddle joint also tells you the shape of the surfaces of the two ends of the bone. The Both of the bo bones have a concave and convex area, looks like a saddle, and when those saddle shapes come together, they have the same type of movement that a condyloid does. It rocks back and forth in this direction, and it rocks back and forth in this direction, which gives you two planes of motion. An example of that is the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb only, not the other finger, just the thumb. So it's the knuckle joint between the thumb. The last type of joint is called the ball and socket joint. This also describes the shape of the ends of the bones. One of the bones, one end of the bone is going to be a ball or a spherical shaped head that's going to fit into a round socket which is a kind of like a concave structure. It's circular but it's concave almost like a ball. And when they come together, it, 
It allows movement in any plane, in any direction, including a rotation. The examples of this type of joint, the ball and socket joint, um, is found in the shoulder and the hip joint. Okay, so the first picture is showing you a plane joint. Again, two surfaces are flat. And one, usually the top bone is going to glide on top of the bottom one. So the top one will move back and forth in this direction or in this direction. And in a plane joint, notice that you can have sliding or gliding movement in, in the same plane, but it can happen in any of those directions. And example of that is your interstarsal joints, which is uh, your ankle joints, and your intercarpal joints, which are your wrist joints, and also into your intervertebral joint between the uh, vertebrae. Saddle joint also tells you the shape of the two surfaces of the bone. Notice that it is looks like almost like a saddle, and they're kind of cupped together, and that allows for movement in this direction and also movement in that direction. Two planes of movement. An example of that type of joints are is found in the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the thumb only. Next is the hinge joint. Remember a cylindrical bone fits into a trough like a dip bone and so that bone is going to be able to rock back in only one plane like a door swinging open and closed and you'll find that type of joint in the um, elbow joint, in the knee joint, and also in the interphalangeal joint, which is the joint between the finger bones. You could also think of your temporal mandibular joint or your jaw joint as a hinge joint. Next is a pivot joint. Usually you have a ring bone with a bone, taller bone in the middle, and what's going to happen, it's going to be a rotational or spinning type of movement. That's a pivot joint. And you're going to find that in the proximal, which is closer to the elbow side, of the between the radius and the ulna joint. And then between the atlas and the axis joint, which is your C1 and C2 vertebrae joint. Note that the pivot joint also has only one plane of movement, which is the twisting. Next is the ball and socket. Notice, notice the spherical end of one bone fits into a socket into the other, and that bone can move in any plane in this direction, including rotation along that bone. So it is the most freely movable joint out of all six. Ball and socket joints are found in the shoulder and the hip joints. The last joint is called a condyloid, or ellipsoid joint. Notice one egg-shaped or oval-shaped convex structure. It fits into a oval or egg-shaped concave, which means it dips in, fits together, which means the top bone can move in this direction and it can move in this direction. The only thing that the ellipsoid movement can't do is rotational. Ellipsoid and condyloid joints are found in the metacarpal carpal joint, which is your knuckle joints on the fingers, except for the thumb, and between the occipital bone or the skull, moving on the atlas. If, if you think of the old style computer monitors that was rocking back and forth so you can control the angle of the screen, that's kind of like what an ellipsoid or a condyloid um, joint would be like. 5.8 notes homework. Number one, how are condyloid and synovial joints similar and different in movement? Number two, what types of joints are temporomandibular and intertarsal joints? Number three, which two types of joints are the only ones to have rotational movement?